Okay, so my name is Bogdan Hetzman. I work for Oracle for almost 10 years. Uh, as MySQL cluster engineer for support and consulting, and recently I moved to Bugs Group, so cluster is not actually what I do anymore, but uh, it's still what I do most of the time. So because I work for Oracle, this is the important slide. Anything I say is my opinion only, and Oracle cannot be held liable for that. So, uh, MySQL. Everybody's using MySQL. Let's not dwell on it. It powers the web. Nothing will be without MySQL. Nothing will exist without MySQL. So, uh, let's look at the general architecture of MySQL as most of the users see. So uh, we have this first layer, which are your applications or let's say clients. Uh, we have uh, MySQL that is what most of you see as MySQL server, which is MySQL D binary that you connect to. And underneath it, uh, MySQL stores all the data in storage engines. So MySQL has this uh, Storage, en uh, storage engine philosophy where you can choose different storage engines for different tables. Not many database servers uh, do that. So we see here some MySQL cluster data nodes, some InnoDB, MyISAM, some storage engine one and storage engine two, and there are a lot of third party ones. So today we're talking a little bit more about MySQL cluster. So who's using MySQL cluster? Well, everybody that matters. So all the telcos, uh, a lot of banks, uh, militaries, everybody that needs anything real time is using MySQL cluster, including Blizzard for games. So one important thing to understand about MySQL cluster is it's not the same thing as cluster of MySQL. Cluster of MySQL will be, would be a, a group of MySQL Ds that you clustered together for some high availability, failover, et cetera, solution. This is not the same thing. MySQL cluster is a separate product from MySQL or today Oracle. And the architecture is a little bit different than what you would normally call a cluster of MySQL. The data is stored in something called NDB nodes. So we have NDB nodes. We have management nodes, and we have SQL and API nodes. The data nodes are the most important part of the MySQL cluster. Uh, they store all the data. Now, data is stored in memory. All the index indexes and data are stored in RAM. Now, it is all checkpointed to the disk, so all data are persistent. Now, since version 6.4, if I remember correctly, uh, you can store some part of your table on disk. So you can choose to have two, three, five columns of your table to be stored on disk to not take place in RAM. But those columns cannot be indexed. So all indexed columns have to be in RAM. As I said, all data is checkpoint to the disk. So you still need a lot of I.O. if you're doing a lot of writes to the database. Uh, data nodes do a lot of other stuff than just to hold the data, like transaction coordination, uh, ability to upgrade, uh, online backup. Uh, you can do online alter table and stuff like that. Of course, they all communicate uh, between themselves. The management nodes are not that important. They don't do much. They are important and necessary only uh, when the node is starting because they hold the configuration of the whole cluster. So when a node is starting, it is contacting uh, management nodes to ask what to do, how to do it, and where other nodes are. Uh, the other thing that uh, management nodes do is logging. So all the logging that is happening in the cluster is done on the management nodes. Uh, they also act as arbitrator to prevent uh, split brain uh, situations. Now, uh, 
when the cluster is operating, you don't need any management nodes, so the cluster will operate properly if, you, if all your management nodes die. Uh, to start the cluster, you, you need at least one management node to be running. Uh, so we say the optimal number of management nodes to have uh, on a cluster setup is two. Three is just doing too, too much. You can put five if you want, but it's useless. And the management nodes don't have to be on like dedicated machines. You can put them, put them on anything. We even uh, developed the Windows version of management nodes, so you can put them on some Windows boxes. SQL nodes are basically API nodes with some smart stuff around them. So let's first talk about API nodes. Like API nodes are applications written in C++ or Java. Uh, they are using C++ API to connect directly to data nodes. So uh, there is no talking to MySQL or anything. They just directly hit the data nodes and talk to data nodes and extract data directly from data nodes. Uh, they're extremely fast. There is no SQL layer, no SQL parser, no optimizer, no nothing. You just directly access the data and, and you retrieve it. Now, uh, SQL node is uh, your MySQL D server with NDB cluster storage engine. The NDB cluster storage engine is the NDB API node that connects to, to, to data nodes. What SQL, MySQL server here does, apart from just use NDB cluster storage engine to get your data, uh, is subscribed for events so it enables uh, replication. So you can have your application between two clusters. That is done through SQL node. Um, also, uh, it can also act as an, ar an arbitrator. And of course, it uh, converts the SQL into NDB API. So you write your SQLs. And for you, it, you, you don't care that it's NDB cluster b uh, below it. So why NDB cluster? It's extremely available, you know, it's, it's high availability on, on, on another level. We say it's between five and eight, nine. Now, uh, this number of replica parameter that I mentioned here is um, how many replica of your data you want in your system. Uh, MySQL cluster has something called uh, uh, node groups. So you can have multiple nodes in a node group. Normally, you, you use two, but you can use three or four or one. If you use one, then there is no high availability. Uh, two is the only supported value. So three and four and five will work, but we don't support it. So if it doesn't work, you just write a bug and we ignore it. So uh, when you create a table on the MySQL cluster, the table will be fragmented into a number of fragments. And each fragment will be assigned to a single node. Now, the copy of that fragment will be on the node pair. Or if you have multiple, more than three, two replicas on, on, on multiple. So each node holds a fragment of your data. For, for that fragment, it is the master node. And also, uh, that same fragment is on the second node as a slave. Every update updates both instances. So your data is updated on two places. But it's all, all, always retrieved only from the master node. Now, if a node dies, the automatic failover, the node that holds the copy, will become master for, for the both replicas. So if two nodes from the same group dies, well, you have a, a crash. But if only one dies, you can survive. Uh, what is very interesting about MySQL cluster is online backup, uh, online alter table, online upgrade, and a number of other online things that you can do. Now, what is an online upgrade? It means that you're upgrading the version of your database server uh, without any break in, 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 in work, and you have zero down, downtime. So you upgrade from 7.1 to 7.4, and you have zero downtime. Uh, online alter table, you need to add five columns to your table. 
In regular MySQL with InnoDB, your table will be locked until the author finish. Uh, in some implementations, in different database systems, you will have a read lock. You will be able to read, but not, not be able to write to that table. But for MySQL cluster, that table is completely accessible for read and write until the, during this alter. And when alter finish, you have another five, six, 50 counts. So those online things are, some, are, are why every, almost every single telco in the world uses uh, MySQL because MySQL cluster, because they cannot uh, work with downtimes. It's extremely high performance. Now, because data is, is in memory, the reads are extremely fast. Uh, we share ILOs, so when you write to database, you have to write those changes to the hard drives. So if you're writing 10 gigabytes to uh, a database in an hour, you don't have a problem with any database that is normal because most hard drives can, can support that much changes in an hour. But if you want to do 100 gigabytes per hour, you will have troubles finding a proper storage that can handle that much data. Now with MySQL cluster, you put 10 servers, you get 10, 10 times more I.O. because you're writing data to all 10 in parallel. Data is automatically sharded. That's the fragmentation of fucking. So uh, there is uh, a number of SQL APIs, SQL nodes that you can you can have. So for example, you can have 50 or or hundreds MySQL Ds, you know, SQL nodes that your application is is using. They all see the same data. When you update the table from one SQL node. All other SQL nodes see that data immediately. Uh, and of course, what we are going to talk about today is this NDB API, so direct access to the data nodes. Uh, I wrote here the tip that you need to design for the cluster, not just do the alter table from NDB to NDB cluster. And that's because of these performance killers. So, you have a network between your data nodes, and they need to communicate and send data you know, to one another. And the typical transaction works as, as this. I'm a client. I connect to one NDB node, and I say, look, man, I need this data. And that node be becomes something called transaction coordinator. And then that node finds this data on the cluster between the other nodes, and it, it retrieves that data and delivers it to you. So you see uh, 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 communication between the nodes there. Now, if you have a slow network or too much traffic on the network, the stuff becomes slow. With standard one gigabit network, uh, up to 10 nodes, you see an increase in, perform in performance. Over 10 data nodes, you stop seeing any increase in performance because uh, adding more data nodes is giving you more I.O. and faster access and stuff like that, but the network becomes uh, a problem and you, somewhere around 20 you even see the decrease of the performance. Now with the 10 gigabit network, uh, 40 data nodes is the limit where you still see some increase in performance. Uh, now note that uh, for Unix operating systems like Linux and BSD, uh, we have, uh, or we had actually didn't look at that piece of code for, for, for more than two years, but we had direct uh, communication with Delphi cards. Those used to be very popular 10 gigabit cards. So if you have Delphi cards, you can set up MySQL cluster to talk directly to Delphi cards and, and avoid some uh, latency introduced by the Linux kernel. Uh, if you don't have Delphi cards but some regular 10 gigabit cards, then we use them just like any other card through the, through the kernel. Joins are a huge problem because to implement a join, you basically do a bunch of nested for loops. And doing that on the network storage is slow. 
and complex and slow, extremely slow. Now, uh, we made a lot of improvements in 7.4. Uh, I introduced uh, batch key batching uh, and a whole other uh, a bunch of stuff that uh, puts all those loops and stuff on the data node, so you don't do them on the, on the SQL node. So when you do join from uh, MySQL, MySQL doesn't do the for loops and connect many times to the, to the NDB cluster, but MySQL uh, creates a small script, sends it to the data node, and then data node uh, basically goes through that script and collects all your data from all the nodes from you and, and return you the, the result. So it's a lot faster, but still, uh, if you have join between two, three tables, it's not a big problem, but if you go like five, six, ten tables, then it just doesn't work. So again, designed for the cluster, don't just do the outer table. Virtualization is great for testing, but if you can run your database server on a virtual machine, you don't really have a problem with performance. Uh, blobs, now, we fix the problem with blobs mostly. Uh, until one huge project that we had blobs where we thought they worked, but actually they didn't. So we mostly fix them. So in 7.4, you shouldn't have performance problem with blobs. But always, when you, when you work with blobs and you have problems, check the bug database. Uh, MySQL cluster is, is very scalable. Uh, at the moment, we support up to 254 nodes. The two are special IDs, so you can't use them. Uh, what we can do is add data nodes online. So you start with two data nodes, and you grow, so you add two more. You do that without interrupting the, the workflow. Everything works. Next, you need uh, another four. You add another four. Again, it's online. You don't have any, any interruption in your work. So uh, with adding data, data nodes, you not only increase the storage you have, because everything is in, is in RAM, so in order to store your data, you need to have RAM for all the data and indexes. So adding more nodes gives you more data space, but also increases higher performance, because you write parallel to those disks too. And of course, we support geographic replication. I already mentioned that. It's a uh, two-channel uh, through MySQL denodes. Now, how you can access NDB cluster data? So standard way is using SQL. It's great. You can write complex queries. They work. Maybe they're slower than in DB. Maybe sometimes they will be faster. But uh, it is simple and it works. Now, because people need more and need performance, and, and people don't like to learn SQL, and, and everybody is in no SQL, and, and people like JavaScript and stuff like that, we added some other ways to connect to NDB cluster. So you have a memcached engine uh, that is a plugin, a storage engine for memcached server. So you install the memcached plugin into your memcached server, and your memcached server stores and retrieves data from NDB cluster. Uh, there is also an NDB API that I mentioned, which is a C++ API. And there is um, cluster J or cluster JPA, which is the NDB API implementation of the, of the JPA. Now, uh, normally, when you use JPA, it will go through JDBC and then through ODBC and connect to MySQL. Now, if you're using cluster, you can, you can decide to use the other path and go through uh, cluster J, which is the Java implementation of the NDB API. Uh, there is also LDAP client for MySQL, uh, MySQL cluster that is using basically 
uh, NDB no nodes, NDB cluster for the storage of the LDAP. Unfortunately, this is not open source or free. But I can tell you that when we wrote it, we had a problem with our colleagues in Sun uh, because it was much faster than any LDAP implementation Sun was able to provide at that moment. So, and that is the interface that most of uh, telcos are using NDB cluster through because all their systems are created to talk LDAP and then, then they use LDAP with MySQL cluster. So this is the cluster stuff. The, the, the thing with Memcached is that it's literally a drop-in replacement. So if you're using Memcached and you want it to be more scalable and to be persistent, you just put NDB engine into your MMKSD server, put some NDB nodes there, and you have a persistent, extremely fast uh, MMKSD. So traditionally, your uh, clients will connect to a number of MMKSD servers that will retrieve and return data. Now, I don't know what your experiences with MMKSD clients and, and these multiple MMKSD servers are. Mine are terrible. So, what we do is we are not giving any smarts into the MemQG client. MemQG client sees one MemQG server, or you can see five or 50 of them, but they all see same data, so you don't have to do the sharding stuff on the client. MemQG uses NDB engine that then finds the data on the NDB data nodes. Now, this is some uh, speed comparison. As you see, uh, NDB engine is a little bit slower than just simple MySQL uh, MemQHD because MemQHD is returning the data from the internal RAM and here MemQHD is returning data from another server. But since we scale very good, you, you, you quickly uh, overcome this small latency difference. Uh, also, this is not persistent and this is a persistent data. Also, a very important thing to note is you are accessing the same data that is on the database. So one part of your application is doing SQLs and doing some inserts and updates and everything else. And some other part of your data is just retrieving key value stuff from the same database. There is no need to do any uh, invalidization of your, of your cache. You just always have the fresh data. Uh, how it works is through this uh, configuration schema where each memcached key is split with a semicolon and then you have a table where you say for this prefix use uh, this table value for the, for the key and this table value for the, for the, for the value. Uh, Node.js, I hate it. But it's very popular and a lot of people use it. So what we did is we created a plugin for Node.js that access uh, cluster directly. So this is basically how it looks like. If you speak JavaScript, you'll understand it. Uh, anyhow, you, you have NDB API, like, like any other NoSQL interface directly from, from uh, nodes, Node.js. So how to get more, more speed from, from MySQL cluster? Now first, C++ programming interface. If you use NDB API, you will get maximum possible speed you can get from the MySQL cluster. Uh, NDB provides you direct access to, to data nodes. Now, I have to say that the guys from InnoDB team since recently give you also the InnoDB API, so you can access InnoDB data also through the C API. Uh, so also a faster way to access your InnoDB data. Uh, avoiding, you know, going around SQL parser and optimizer and everything else. Uh, you don't need MySQL server 
for, 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 for running an NDB cluster, but you should, because it's much easier to create databases, tables, and everything else using uh, simple SQL commands than writing a code every time you want to create something. Uh, there are things like uh, query batching, uh, all transactions are asynchronous, and then the cluster supports something very interesting, the, the events. Now, what you can do is you can write an API that only does this, connects to, to an NDB cluster, and say, this table, this column, if somebody's changing it, I want to know about it. So when the change happens in the database, you will receive an event, and then you do whatever you want with it. Um, for example, the replication in NDB cluster works through events uh, in the way that MySQL server connects to the cluster. If you say that it, it, it should do bin logging, it connects to the cluster and say, look, I want to know about all changes. And then the cluster sends the events for every change that happens in the database, and MySQL then converts that into a bin log and writes it locally. So it is also something that telcos uh, are using a lot, uh, game developers are using a lot, etc. Because it's it's much easier to have a completely separate process on a separate set of machines that is monitoring database than triggering from where you put the data in. Now we all know that if somebody's trying to sell you a silver bullet, he's either an idiot or a liar. Now, the cluster is not, MySQL cluster is not silver bullet. There are a lot of things that are not that nice. For start, we call it portability. Uh, everything is hard-coded, so all the, the queries to the database, all the execution paths, everything is hard-coded into your application. So changes are not simple, not interchangeable, and uh, can lead to errors if you don't have proper structure of code reviews and, and how you work in your organization, stuff like that. Uh, between 10 and 15% of problems we have with our clients is because of that. Flexibility, of course. Uh, in SQL, if you do select star from whatever, and then you call find me a column that is named name and get some data through it, and maybe it was uh, int and now it's big int, it's not a big deal. Now with NDB API, this is a big deal. Every change to the database structure um, needs to be also change it in the code. So it also can lead to, to some errors and, and definitely reduces the, the flexibility. There is no privilege system in, in MySQL cluster. Now, if I can access a port on your NDB node, I can do anything with you. I can delete data, I can retrieve data, I can do anything. So there is no like grained access as you have on, on, on MySQLD. Uh, also, there is no security at all. There is no auditing. Uh, so you see that data is gone, but you have no idea who did it and when. Yeah, but d d d there's a firewall. You know, you put your, da your, your database behind the firewall and... Yeah, but they, it's, yeah. Yeah, but they, they, they use it behind the firewall. For, for example, uh, those uh, big uh, carriers with, you know, a lot of, yeah. Yeah, well, the navigation is running my square cluster, for example. And there is no security there. But the, 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 the whole system is behind the firewall. Now, uh, a lot of clients use the system where you have two networks, a completely separate networks. You have cluster on data nodes on one ring, on one, one LAN. 
and then you have API nodes and SQL nodes with two ne network cards, and one card is connected to data nodes where they communicate with data nodes, and the other card is connected to the, to, to the actual LAN in the facility. So you use those nodes as control over who accesses what. But basically, the NDB cluster as is doesn't have any level of security. You just tell it to the port and then you talk with it. That's it. Doesn't ask you credentials. You can do anything you want. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't get you. Yeah, if you have a bug in your application, if we have a bug in MySQL D, and we used to. <laughs> well, it's 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 what it is, you know. If you, if you have a bug in, in the software, yeah, if, if somebody can exploit that bug, it can get to your data. But, uh, you know, Microsoft's Windows have username and password, and you can still get into it if you don't know it. So the, the, where bugs are, are, are a whole different story. So no triggers, no views, no store procedures. So a lot of things doesn't exist in NDB cluster. Security is extremely important part of what's missing. And as far as I'm aware, it's not the part that will ever change. Because auditing and security uh, take time. No time to, to develop. It's actually quite simple to develop it. Uh, they take time from, from, uh, from your queries. So that's why it doesn't exist in uh, uh, how NDB API works, so you start a trans transaction from the developer side, you define the operation, you execute it, and you commit to our boards. So starting a transaction is super hard, you do start transaction. Uh, getting the operation object is, again, extremely hard, you know, get NDB operation. Now, you have to define the operation type. And you just call one of these methods to define the operation type, what operation you want to, you want to do. And that's it. Now, this is a, a, a simple primary key access example. So what we did here is uh, we are running the, the get value and executing transaction, and that's it. Now, what is important if you start writing NDB API uh, programs? If in any moment your uh, NDB transaction is not valid, you have to reconnect. So the whole thing is dead. Also, NDB transaction, you need to have a copy per thread. So if you're writing a multi-threaded application, you have to have uh, an own NDB, uh, NDB uh, transaction in each thread. You, you can't reuse them. Uh, primary key is, of course, the fastest way of getting data from NDB cluster, just like joins are the slowest way of getting data through clusters. So uh, doing joins is programmatically easy, but it's slow. Now, the major problem with joins and cluster is not only that the data is spread on the, on the nodes that are on the network. It is not only that uh, the problem is you cannot dynamically change what you do. When you do join from inside SQL nodes, the optimizer will look at data stati uh, table statistic at that moment in time and decide the best execution, fa uh, execution path for that moment in time. That best execution path will change the way your data in your tables change. Uh, you can't do this with NDB API. You have to decide the execution path 
in the code time and you cannot change it. Or you can implement, of course, you know, you can ask for statistics and should do this or that part, but that's almost nobody's using that. Uh, the way a lot of us do this, the, how we decide what the execution path is, is we use MySQL D, we run explain select, blah, blah, blah. We get the execution path MySQL D will choose, and then we implement that execution path with maybe some tweaks, but uh, that's the fastest way to get the working join. This is, note that this is a logarithmic y axis. So it's uh, 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, and a billion. So the, the red line is uh, reads per seconds through SQL. The blue line is reads per second uh, using NDB cluster, NDB API. And this is the number of nodes. Uh, this is 10 nodes, and this here is 32 nodes. Uh, I wasn't running this uh, because it was going too slow. I, I just stopped the test. But as you can see, from 300,000 queries per second, you get to 12.5 million queries per second just by using a different approach to your data. Of course, this is primary key access, both. So the, the simplest and the fastest way to get your data. This is select uh, something from T1 where primary key equals some random number. And that is the example I just shown. So, well, the SQL parser, the optimizer, the, the data is in RAM, don't forget. So, but, but okay, no, here, here the data is also in RAM for the, for the red one too. But. No, it's, it, it's actually, no, it's actually identical configuration. Yeah, it's on the cluster. With, with SQL nodes and without SQL nodes. So through using libMySQL and using NDB API. So I think the, the difference is explaining why we have this talk. And that's about what I have for you today. Nope. No security. Yes, security. No security. Okay. Yes. Security. Yeah, exactly. yeah, but there is also auditing. You have auditing in MySQL. You can have auditing. Uh, you have a whole bunch of other things. You have been logging. You don't have been logging here. In. Any other questions? Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's what I said. Uh, a lot of people think that MySQL cluster is cluster of MySQL. It's not. You have to design your application to be aware of MySQL cluster and to use MySQL cluster the way it's meant to be used. Now, with 7.4, we made MySQL cluster more like general uh, database. So the joins are like, five to 10 times faster than in 7.2. Uh, a lot of things work differently. We have uh, some push down, some, some, a lot of stuff are pushed down on, on the data nodes, so they work faster. But it's still slower than InnoDB in, in a general use case. If, if you put uh, all those famous uh, WordPresses, Joomla's, Drupal's, and stuff like that, they, they're like, 10 to 50 times slower on MySQL clustering than on InnoDB. Is there going, is there anything going on that we're going to see from my 
No, 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 no. What we did in 7.4, that's, that's about most of what is possible. Of course, we are going to improve performance, but uh, making it more general use than what we did in 7.4, I don't think it's possible. Of course, who knows what is going to happen tomorrow. But basically, we are, yeah, we are improving the performance. But What's your personal opinion about the Lera synchronized cluster? Uh, the guys from, from Percona did a, lot, a great thing with, with Galera. It's great, it works nice while it works. When it stops working, you have a problem. The only uh, suggestion I can give you if you are using Galera, pay subscription and get support and always have support for, for MySQL, it will save you a lot of money and a lot of trouble. There is no downtime with my square cluster. No, no downtime. No downtime. No, not a millisecond. No, it, because it's designed and architecture that way. Uh, the way it works is you always have, you don't shut down everything, upgrade and, and, uh, and start new. Or when you add another node, you don't shut down your database and, and start a new node. Your database is running. So when you do an upgrade, for example, all your data is on two nodes, at minimum two nodes. So what you do is you shut down one node, the other node is working perfectly. You upgrade that node, you get it back. You shut down the other node, you upgrade it, you get it back. So the whole system is working perfectly. But yeah, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, but uh, the, I think it's it's not. Uh, professional for me to now give you a whole bunch of stuff why Galera doesn't work because I work for Oracle so it's, it's uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a great product well you can you, you can al you cannot do everything in alter you can you can add more columns and you can change uh, the columns but Online changes are only the, if the mm, conversion is known. So you cannot convert from string to integer, it, it will not work. But you can increase the size of, of, uh, of car field. You cannot decrease the size of the, of the car field. Stuff like that. But basically the, the need to, to modify uh, in, the, in the real field uh, it's, it's minimal. It's almost, I don't think we have a single request for that. People want to add stuff. And adding stuff is, is, is basically easy. With, with my professor, it's very easy. The best proposal for simulating triggers? In the well, you, you have triggers if you don't use NDB API. If you use SQL to access my score cluster, you have triggers in 7.4. Now, you, you don't have them if you're using NDB API, but if you're using NDB API, if you want to trigger on something, there are the events that I mentioned. So you can say, okay, well, if somebody changes this, I want to know about it. And then, well, implement the triggers yourself. Anybody else? Well, if we, if we take WordPress and Joomland and those type of applications as example, those are the people that doesn't, were made by people who doesn't know how to write SQL. So they're basically slow on, on any database. So it's, it's, uh, it's an example of how not to design database and use it. It's completely irrelevant what's behind it. Now, uh, if we're talking about how complex the data can be. The data can be incredibly complex, but the access to data needs to be simple. So 
the, the, the typical use for MySQL cluster is the typical use for MySQL cluster is LDAP. Now you know how complex an LDAP database can be. Now it is a perfect storage engine for LDAP server. And LDAP servers are extremely complex databases, but and and usually very slow, but if you use MySQL, they are extremely fast. But the whole thing is uh, you don't want to do a 10-way join. If you want to do a 10-way join, then think of either other way to organize your data or the other way to access your data, whatever, if you want to use cluster. Or you don't need to use the cluster. That's the, that's the beauty with MySQL. You can, those data you can store in UNDB and replicate it between your SQL nodes. And you will have your data that you want to access to join locally on, on SQL nodes in InnoDB with all the InnoDB buffering and, and, and all the beauty of, of InnoDB. And then the data you use often and need often, you keep in, in MDB cluster. And access in all three ways in the same time because in some parts of application, it's wi way easier to use SQL. In some parts, you want to use NDB API. In some parts, you want to use MemcacheD. We have a bunch of clients that are pushing data directly from MySQL cluster on the web using MemcacheD uh, plugin for Nginx. So they have a backend application that are uh, reading different events and creating HTML and pushing it into database and they have Nginx using MemcacheD protocol and getting that data directly from MySQL cluster and pushing it on, on, on the website. Now, they are handling some gazillion uh, HTTP requests per, per, per minute that were unable to, to generate any other way. That's it, we're done, thank you.